Okay, in this video, we will talk about how to determine the ratio of charge over mass of a particle. Okay, charge over mass is called specific charge. First of all, you need to understand what do we mean by specific charge, which is the charge to mass ratio. Okay, for example, this is an electron. The electron has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb and then the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 power negative 31 kilogram and then this divided by this is equal to this okay the charge to mass ratio is the specific charge so you say that the specific charge of an electron is this one then you can also do the same for the proton and alpha and any charged particle. Okay? So for example, the alpha, what is an alpha particle? An alpha particle is just two protons and two neutrons together. So you know that when it has two protons, then the charge of the alpha particle is 2 times 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb which is 3.2 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb okay and then the mass of the alpha particle is like this then you can also find the specific charge of the alpha particle but then in this video we are talking about how to get a specific charge from some experiments and also some mass spectrometer okay so when you know this is positively charged then you have to put this sign okay so first of all, I think you need to do some revision on how the motion of the charged particle will be when the charged particle is moving perpendicularly into a uniform electric field. Okay, recall that in the video 12.7, okay, when the electron is coming perpendicularly to the electric field then you know that in the horizontal motion the electron is moving at constant velocity but then in the vertical motion the electron is accelerating from rest okay that means that no velocity slow fast okay so overall the motion of the electron is getting faster and faster because you know that the electric force is acting vertically so you know that the acceleration of the electron is in the vertical motion only okay it only has acceleration in the direction along the electric field okay so the electric force on the charged particle is along the electric field and perpendicular to the initial velocity the electric force will accelerate the charged particle in the direction of the electric field. And so you know that the electric force can really do some work onto the charged particle. So the charged particle will travel in a parabolic path, okay? Because you can find y equal to something x squared and the something is just a constant, okay? So by you by getting this formula you know that it is actually a parabolic equation, okay? So you know that the path of the electron inside the uniform electric field is a parabola, okay? So the charged particle will travel in a parabolic path inside the uniform electric field and the speed will increase. Okay, so when the charged particle is moving perpendicularly into a uniform magnetic field, then the charged particle will travel in a circular path. Okay, by using Fleming left hand rule FBV. Okay, for example, in this case, is B is into the page and then V is here, so you know that the force is downward okay so this is a proton the proton will move in an anti-clockwise direction so the electron will move in a clockwise direction
the magnetic force on the charged particle is perpendicular to the magnetic field and perpendicular to the initial velocity. The magnetic force will accelerate the charged particle perpendicular to the magnetic field and also perpendicular to the velocity. Okay, so you know that the force is perpendicular to the velocity. That means that the acceleration is also perpendicular to the velocity. And then the acceleration is also perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so you know that the magnetic field cannot do any work onto the charged particle and therefore the charged particle will always have a same speed. That means that the charged particle cannot have the speed to be increased. Okay, because there's really no work done onto the charged particle by the magnetic field. Okay, so after learning this, we now come to the velocity selector. So now, this is a wall, okay, this is a wall, and then in between the wall, there's a slit, okay, there's a space in within the positive ion can come in, okay, so let's say, now the positive ion is coming perpendicularly at a speed V, if the speed is less than a certain value, or if the speed is greater than certain value, then the positive ion cannot come out of the slit here. For example, in this case, this plate is positively charged and then this plate is negatively charged. So you know that the electric field will point from here to here. And then the direction of the magnetic field is into the pitch. Okay, so you know that inside this space, the positive ion will experience both electric force and also the magnetic force. Okay, so this is a positive ion. This is negative plate. So you know that the direction of the electric force is to here. Okay, B is into the page, FBV. So you know that the direction of the magnetic force is to here. So you know that inside the velocity selector, the direction of the electric force will always be opposite to the direction of the magnetic force. In this case, if the magnitude of the electric force is greater than the magnitude of the magnetic force, then the positive ion will be deflected and therefore the positive ion cannot come out of the velocity selector. Okay. We call this one as velocity selector. So now, if the velocity is greater than a certain value, that means that the magnetic force is greater than the electric force, then the positive ion will be deflected in the other direction so that the positive ion still cannot come out of the velocity selector. Only when the magnitude of the electric force is same as the magnitude of the magnetic force, then only the positive ion will experience zero resultant force, and then only the positive ion can come out undeflected. That means that only the positive ion with this certain speed, then only the positive ion can come out of the velocity selector. So you know that the velocity selector has a function to filter out the charged particle of the other velocities. That means that I only want the particle of this velocity to come out. If the velocity is not this, then I don't want the charged particle to come out anymore. Okay, so this is the function of the velocity selector. Okay, so the reason that you need to learn about velocity selector is that it will be used in some spectrometer and also some experiments. Okay, for example, this is a mass spectrometer. This is your ion source and then this is your ion accelerator so that the ion will move from here to here to here to here to here. Okay, in this region, the magnetic field is out of the page and then the electric field is from here to here. Okay, the electric field will always point from the region of higher potential to region of lower potential. Okay, so you know that the electric 
force on the positive ion is here, okay, because the positive ion will tend to move to region of lower potential, okay, of lower electric potential. And then by using a Fleming left hand rule, when the B is out of page and then when the V is here, you know that the magnetic force is to this direction, okay. So once again, inside the velocity selector, you know that the direction of the electric force is opposite to the direction of the magnetic force, okay. So after the ion can come out of the velocity selector, it will go into the deflection chamber. Inside the deflection chamber, you only have the magnetic field. And then also by using the Fleming left hand rule, you know that B2 is out of the page. And then V is here. So you know that the force is here. Okay, the force is to the center of the circular path. Okay, so you know that the positive ion will be deflected like this. And then inside the deflection chamber, since you only have the magnetic field, then you know that the magnetic force can provide the centripetal force. Okay, so by using these two formulas, okay, you know that inside the velocity selector, only the velocity of the positive ion has this value, then only the positive ion can come out of the velocity selector. Okay, otherwise the ions can never come out of the velocity selector. Okay, so by using these two formulas, you can find the charge to mass ratio. Okay, so now you already use this formula and then you have used this formula. Okay, you use this formula when you know that the magnetic field will provide you the centripetal force. You use this formula when it comes to the velocity selector. Okay, let's take a look at the another mass spectrometer. Okay, so once again, this is the ion source, and then the ion source will be accelerated by a potential difference of capital V. And then when it comes into the deflection chamber, you know that at this time inside the chamber, you have some slits. Okay, the function of the slit is to prevent the ions that have this or they have this circular path, okay? That means that I only want the positive ions with the radius of the circular path of this length to come out from the chamber. Otherwise, if the, if the positive ions will be deflected like this, or if the positive ions will be deflected like this, then they can never come out of the slit here. Okay, it's just like the velocity selector, okay, whereby you use the slit. Okay, so you know that in this region, you also use the formula that the magnetic force can provide you the centripetal force. And then when you know that the ion is being accelerated by a potential difference, you know that the work done by the electric field is equal to the increase in the kinetic energy of the positive ion. Okay, so by using these two formula, once again, you can find the charge to mass ratio. Okay, so until now, you already learned two different ways of determining the charge to mass ratio. Okay, charge to mass ratio. And then in here, you use this formula again. And then you use this formula, okay? You use this formula when you know that the charged particle is being accelerated by a by an electric field so that the charged particle can gain some kinetic energy. So let's take a look at uh, Thomson's experiment. For your information, JJ Thomson is the first person to discover electrons. Okay, that means that he discovered electrons. And then in this experiment, once again, you can find this velocity selector. Okay, you always know that inside the velocity selector, you have the magnetic field and then you also have the electric field. And then you know that the magnetic field will always be perpendicular to the electric field. Okay, so, okay, this is cathode. Cathode is a negatively charged terminal. This is an anode. Anode is a, is a positively charged terminal. 
Okay, so this is a hot filament cathode. That means that the electron can be emitted from this cathode and then the electron will be accelerated to a knot. Okay, so when the electron is being accelerated, you know that you can use this formula. And then when the electron comes into the velocity selector, only the electron of this velocity can come out of the velocity selector. Okay, so you always remember that inside the velocity selector, the direction of the electric force, which is here, and the direction of the magnetic force, which is here, is always opposite. So only the velocity is equal to E over B, then only the electron can come out of the velocity selector. And then once the electron hits this fluorescent screen, it will leave behind a spot so that the person can discover the spot on the screen. Okay. And then this whole thing is called cathode ray tube, okay? Because we say this ray, okay, which is the ray of electron to here, is a cathode ray, okay? Because this ray is coming out of the cathode, so we call this one is a cathode ray. And then this whole thing is a cathode ray tube, okay? And then inside this, we have the velocity selector. So once again, by using these two formulas, you can find the charge to mass ratio. Okay, so in here you use half mv square and also this formula. Okay, so you really have to know that normally in this subchapter, you only deal with these three kind of equations. Okay, and then normally you will use two equations out of three to find the charge to mass ratio okay so until now you already have three different answers for the charge to mass ratio which is this one and also this one and also this one okay So actually, you have to remember that in this chapter, in this sub chapter, you only deal with these three kind of equations. Okay. So now we do some questions and answer. The path of an electron moving through a uniform magnetic field perpendicularly out of the plane of the paper is shown. So this is the electron. And then when the electron comes into a region of uniform magnetic field, then it will have a circular path and then when it comes out of the magnetic field once again it will move in a straight line because there is now no more force acting on the electron outside the region of the magnetic field the speed of the electron is 4.8 times 10 power 6 meter per second and the magnetic flux density is 5.6 times 10 power negative 3 tesla. The radius of the path of the electron in the magnetic field is 4.88 times 10 power negative 3 meter. Determine the ratio E over M for the electron. That means that I want you to find the ratio of charge to mass which is the specific charge of the electron. Okay, F equal to ma. You know that the magnetic force will provide you the centripetal force, okay? So by using this formula, you can find the E over M ratio. Determine the magnitude and direction of an electric field which must be applied on the electron so that the direction of its movement does not change. Okay, if you want the direction of the movement does not change, that means that you want the electron to move in a straight line. That means that the magnitude of the electric force must be same as the magnitude of the magnetic force. So you can find the value of the electric field strength. And then in this region, you use Fleming left hand rule. The magnetic field is out of the page and then the velocity is here. And then, since the electron has a negative charge, so the direction of the force is opposite to this direction, which is here, okay? So you know that here, the magnetic force on the electron is upward. And then if you want the direction of the movement of the electron 
to remain constant, then you have to make sure that your electric force is in the downward direction. And then if you want your if you want your electric force to be in downward direction, that means that you want your electric field to be in upward direction because you know that a negatively charged particle will tend to move to region of higher electric potential. Okay, so your electric field should point upward so that the electric force will point downward onto the electron. In Thomson's experiment, a beam of electrons is allowed to pass through a region. Okay, this is called region P, and then you know that actually this is what? This is velocity selector, okay, which consists of electric field and magnetic field so that the electrons can hit the screen at O as shown. The function of the region P is to, okay, the function of the velocity selector is to allow the electrons of a certain speed to move through the region. Okay, so only when the electrons have speed V equal to E over B, then only the electron can come out of the velocity selector. Okay, so now we find the direction of the magnetic force and also the electric force on the electron okay so you know that this is electron here and then okay the electron will tend to move to region of higher electric potential that means that the electric force is to upward direction in the velocity selector okay so you use Fleming left hand rule fbv b is into the page V is here, and then you know that since the electron has a negative charge, so the direction of the magnetic force is opposite, which is downward. Okay, so the magnetic force will add downward onto the electrons. Okay, so now you know that if, let's say the electric force is greater than the magnetic force, then what will happen? Okay, if your velocity of the electron is less than this value, that means that you know that the electric force is greater than the magnetic force. Okay, so the electron will move like this, and then it will clash with this positively charged plate. Okay, so the electron can never come out of the velocity selector. So if the magnetic force is greater than the electric force then you know that the velocity of the electron is larger than this value okay so that the magnetic force is larger and then when the magnetic force is larger you know that the electron will do, 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 clash with this negatively charged plate okay so you know that if the velocity is not this value the electron can never come up that means that the electron will either clash with this or the electron will collide with this so that the electron can never come out of the velocity selector without being deflected. A charged particle travels in a straight line through a region with uniform electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other. The electric field strength and the magnetic flux density are 80 kV per meter and 0.4 Tesla respectively. Find the speed of the charged particle so that it continues to travel in a straight line. If you want the charged particle to travel in a straight line, that means that there is no resultant force acting on the charged particle. That means that the magnitude of the electric force must be same as the magnitude of the magnetic force and then you know that the direction of the electric force must be opposite to the direction of the magnetic force so by using this formula you can find the velocity of the charged particle an electron of mass m is accelerated by the potential difference v in the region of electric field and magnetic field b perpendicular to one another. The electron travels in a straight line. Please derive an expression for the ratio E over m. Okay, when you know that the electron is accelerated in a region by the potential difference capital V, you can use this formula. 
Because you know that when the electron is accelerated by the potential difference V, the work done by the electric field is equal to the increase in kinetic energy of the electron. Okay, so when it comes to the velocity selector, because you know that in a velocity selector, the direction of the electric field must be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so you use this formula for the velocity selector. So by using these two equations, you can find the E to M ratio. So in the next video, we'll be talking about Hall effect. Thank you.